Doamne, Bishop Caristus, în urmă de absenșa, pentru Rebbe Anu Capitinu, schimbirea în absenșa, pentru Rebbe Anu Vicent Chilabo, Marei Sereplat, Bishop Rebbe Anu Bud Homini, pentru Rebbe Anu Vicent Chilabo, în absenșa, pentru Vicio Spiria Rebbe Anu Parasipian din Aha, CSC, the pastoral coordinator, Reverend Dr. Charles Coyo, the Reverend Fathers, Reverend Sisters, Reverend Brothers, Parish Executive Council, the Lord of the Catechists, the Deputy Regional Police Commander uh, for the Dens, Rossi Charles Police Station, invited guests, members of the Charles Sosi Parish community, ladies and gentlemen, the Kwasaba, the Rosawangi, Mbazi mjungu, alokuwa mkekanize mjungu mkinyao hii. So mbrangalia, alatora wa mkaranako kuja kuhindura mtoro. Mbira mbifika, mbuke mbaparo kwezi. Mbrangalia, mbrangalia. On behalf of Chasosi Parish Community, and on my own behalf, I welcome you all to St. Jude Tadeo Parish, Chelsos. We congratulate His Lordship, Bishop Robert Mjewa Akiji, for hosting his press Lambert and my Lord Bishop Scaristus and Vincent. I feel honored to receive you here in my capacity as the third parish priest of Chelsos Parish, a position I assumed in August 2018. The Charles Parish community is very grateful, my Lord Bishop Akiti, for giving them this honor and opportunity to receive the bishops in this our humble parish. <laughs> the historical background of this parish, the history of Charles Catholic Parish, starts in the 1922. With its first catechist being late Augustine Katawasiwe, Katawasiwe, who hailed from Kiburara Bukwari Parish. And its original location was Buhaza, about Buhaza Mro. Its original location was Buhaza, and was under Kichuchu sub parish by then. As soon as the church came up in 1924, the missionaries of Africa otherwise known as the White Fathers, constructed Charles Primary School in the same place. It is said that when King Ichebambe Kasagama Kothoro visited his aunt, Mrs. Kachaku, he was disturbed by the noise made by the school children. He better forgot that when the church and the school be relocated. King Ichebambe allocated the land and constructions began. In 1927, both the parish places and the primary school shifted to where they are currently located. In the 1972, Charles became a sub parish of Great Utiti Parish, and on 27th November 1976, became a Eucharistic center. The journey to becoming a parish started with the visit of then Bishop of the Portrait Diocese, like Right Reverend St. Peter Magamba Boy, who promised it to elevate Charles from Moksabo Parish to a parish level. He even donated some iron sheets for the construction to start. Zealous men and women of Charles Christian community started mobilizing themselves towards that cause. With the visit of his successor, Lt. Bishop Paul Kalam Akiki, it was agreed that the headquarters of the parish be Charles Sosa, not Chembogo, which was the other alternative. During his visit to Charles Sosa on 20th May 1993, he declared that Charles Sosa, as a parish, be carved out of the TT parish. At this inception, at its inception rather, the new parish was placed under the custodian of the Congregation of Holy Cross, and the pioneer in Holy Cross made the Reverend Father Richard Protest, CSC, the parish priest, 
Brother Gerard Sadik CSC, may his soul rest in peace. Brother Clofas Chobuhendo CSC, and the Reverend Father James Bessa CSC, who was then TSNL waiting to be ordained. Two sub parishes where they had 22 churches by that time. I don't have to mention them all. But on Sunday, on 25th September 1994, Charles was erected as a parish by then Bishop of the Diocese of the Reverend Paul Kalanda Kakiki. On that same day, I, the current parish priest, was a day leader. The first parish priest of Chalsosi became Father Richard Potas, who moved from Mutitu. The first chairperson and the lady was Joachim Katurama, and the first head catechist was Serebano Kahu. Father James Plus was the first priest to be ordained to Chalsosi as a parish. dedicated to the patronage of St. Jude Tadeo. Building on the local enthusiasm and wavering commitment and endurance of parishioners, goodwill from friends and benefactors, mainly the Congregation of Holy Cross, and it is to say the blessings and intercession of St. Jude Tadeo, the parish steadily grew. The succession of the parish priests have been the following. Pioneer, Reverend Brother Richard Potas, CSC. We are blessed to have him in our midst. Took over this parish from 25th September 1994 to 21st May 2017. <coughs> Reverend Father Francis Mukasi, from May 2017 to August 2018. And Reverend Father James Mukasa, from August 2018 to this day. Currently, the parish is administered by a team of four hard-working priests. Namely, Reverend James Grasa, CSC, the parish priest, Reverend Father Patrick Okuthe, CSC curate, and Reverend Father Julius Mumbele, CSC curate. We are blessed with the presence of Father Francis Yerhanga, the season priest from the Fort Diocese, appointed by Bishop Robert Bihiwa, stay with us until July. We are also blessed with the seminarian Emmanuel Issa Abiyye, CSC, waiting to be ordained deacon this year. This April, we had an opportunity to host Reverend Father Chrysostom Chibakuriwa from the Diocese of Porto, currently minister in the United States of America. Father Chibakuriwa is the son of this parish. has other Holy Cross religious living outside the parish compound. At St. Joseph's Hill Senior Secondary School, we have the Banneklim community. And the Banneklim house has Brother Joseph Kaganda, CSC, the head teacher. Brother Jim Nichols, CSC, the Vasa. I'm sorry. Is he there? Can you stand up, Brother Jim, for the position?
Liliane já conhece que se esse câncer. Our parish profile reveals that we have closer to 20,000 patients distributed in 35 churches, village churches, including this church Sozi. The youngest being St. Francis Kibugo, that was opened last week on the Divine Mercy Sunday. These churches are grouped in six centers, commonly known as the Handa. And we have 68 catechists, four of whom are undergoing training as qualified catechists. We have 14 Eucharistic centers with 17 Eucharistic ministers. 260 small Christian communities and several devotional movements and associations, including Catholic Men Association and Catholic Women Association. Native priests and religious heading from this Chancellor's Parish are six priests, four of religious nuns, and one brother, St. Joseph of Waka. We are assisted by catechists and the Council of the Lady of all churches, but above all, the parish council of the Lady, who is executive. And I would like to, once again, if you don't mind, uh, show you the chairperson, Mr. Christopher Masige, who is assisted by Mr. Emmanuel Kamara. We have Mr. Francis Kato Mdisha, secretary. We have Mr. Benjamin Agava, Vice Secretary, Mrs. Beatrice Kahundo, Treasurer, Mr. Estero Kadoma, Head in Catechist, Mr. Deo Agava, Coordinator of the Lay Movements, Mr. Godfrey Maramira, Coordinator of Small Christian Communities, Mr. Resta Janungi, Female Youth Representative, Mr. Kadeo Agava, Male Youth Representative, Mr. Matia Weza, Health and Sanitation. Mr. Joseph Simet, Lands and Development. Mr. Peter Watanigai, Education Secretary. Mr. Bell Masige, Family Desk. Mr. Simusima Prima, Family Desk. The other two not part of the executive cast of the late include Mr. Matia Weza, Head of the Parish Catholic Men Association. And Mrs. Ben Rumi, head of the Parish Catholic Women Association. Allow me to introduce you uh, the five plans, strategic plans in your folder. We're not read it all, don't worry. Uh, we're going to capture something small. Somehow the Holy Spirit has been growing um, to align us with the diocese because. Under the theme, Light the World Through Evangelization, the parish came up with a plan that we will follow from the beginning of 2022 to the end of 2026. Please find that copy. Borrowing from that executive summary, I said that between October and December 2021, the office of the parish priest and the chairperson of the Council of the Lady and the two consultative processes to develop this five-year strategic plan. It is a product of protracted consultations with multiple stakeholders, like our Christians, small Christian communities, catechists, members of the council, lady and other certain stakeholders outside the parish, like the diocesan office of pastoral coordinator. The plan expounds on the governance structure, vision, mission, goal, and core values of the parish. You will find them listed. I don't have to burden you reading through them. Further on, uh, the plan entails what the experts call SWOT, which is strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. The SWOT analysis, an understanding of key stakeholders in the parish, the fear of change behind the running and management of the parish and key strategic objectives and activities. At the end, the plan gives a summary of funds needed to implement strategic activities in the next five years and the expected source of these funds. It's all speculation, but 
we have at NLA. As a good practice, offices of the parish priest and chairperson of the parish council of the lady have endeavored to share the content of this plan with other stakeholders in the parish as a way of facilitating its implementation. Annually, we come together to review this plan to see if we are still on the right path and above all to interpret something of interest that is new and also the plans of the diocese are spelled out by the bishop or the pastoral coordinator. At this moment, allow me to appreciate the Holy Cross congregation for all the support they have generously accorded this parish. <laughs> the benefactors like Rosla, through Father Richard Potast, the support of our bishop, the office of pastoral coordinator, and all our friends and well wishers for tirelessly supporting different parish ministry and activities. Allow me to share with you what I consider as parish achievements. In the chapter 4 of the strategic plan, we highlight the SWOT, in other words, the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. We admit that we still have our weaknesses, especially in the areas of self reliance, struggling with the fears of children, and then art. Nevertheless, as Chelsea's parish community, we count our blessing in thanksgiving to God for all that He has enabled us to do in the shortest time possible. These are what we celebrate as achievement. Number one, we celebrate good relationship with the Chelsea's. Whereas our parishioners are not rich people, but rich in their hearts, we have endeavored to clear all their season issues in time. We are certain that we do not have any errors. <laughs> this good working relationship with the diocese is not limited to finances alone, but it cuts across in all areas. For instance, we take as a priority what the bishop has asked us to do, pastoral coordinator, chancellor, youth coordinators, and others. I believe the reason of your being here is a testimony that this has been the case. <laughs> we celebrate the reacquisition of church lands. It was passed out in one of the, our parish executive council of the lady that all people sitting on church lands should vacate within a given time. We also decreed that all the churches or leg movements of the churches of small Christian communities should be the one to use the lands as a source of income to the church or group concerned, but not individuals. Whereas it was not all that easy, we finally won the battle. We are beginning to see positive fruits as an outcome of this exercise. We are grateful to the efforts invested by the Chairperson Lands Committee and his team. Our next assignment is to acquire the titles of these lands. The challenge has been to obtain copies of agreements when they first bought them. Number three, we celebrate the lay apostolate, movements and association. We have seen a paradigm shift in these movements from dormancy to vibrancy. Our parish is always busy with retreats or gatherings of these groups. The once dominant the region of Mary has bounced back with vigor thanks to the new parish leadership in place. Our holy childhood continue to be on top of the rest in the home diocese. Most recent, but not the least of them, are the Catholic Men Association and Catholic Women Association. Having heard the call from the bishop that he wanted the formation of this association, we quickly embraced the call. Father Sebastian Mbinge CSC and I have lived in Kenya before and therefore had a good knowledge of the association. After introducing it to the patients in our monthly program circulated to all churches through catechists, I gave the responsibility to Father Sebastian, now not here, to go around the parish including members. When Bishop Robert Mbiwa came for confirming the sacrament of confirmation, 
we don't have the moment to place the new members, which was for us a way of launching with the association in our parish. So, Bishop, as you can see, your blessings work. On another occasion, we blessed the uniform as you now see it. We have high hopes in this association, especially in the promoting faith within men and women, safeguarding the welfare of their families, and the learning from one another in one way or another. The registration is ongoing, and now the task ahead of us is the formation and setting up structures including the constitution. We already have the tools to guide us in this course on the booklets over there. We celebrate the small Christian communities in our parish. Whereas a lot is still left to be done, our parish is still doing well thanks to our able coordinator of the small Christian community, Mr. Godfrey Brian. We know that church within Chalso's parish tops the rest of the churches within the lives of Fort Portrait as having the best performing small Christian communities. Besides having the community coordinator, we have also ensured that there are one continual conferring of the awareness courses, two training of the small Christian community leaders, three pastoral visitation mainly by our catechists and four regular masses celebrated in the small Christian community. Chalso's church has also benefited from the visitation by the Holy Cross sisters. Number five, we celebrate Chalso's parish self-help group. This is something closer to the support of our time. It was introduced to encourage our Christians to know the value of saving. Although it was interrupted by the COVID-19, as soon as we initiated, this saving group has helped many in the marriage times. It offers soft loans, but with a different arrangement commonly used in the circles, and it only charges 1% for transaction purposes. It is a registered group, and currently it has close to 30 million as money we keep for our Christians. We feel happy serve them in this capacity. We celebrate the constructions and the renovations of our physical structures. Shortly before the COVID-19 and within the lockdown, we launched a program of securing the parish headquarters compound. We renovate the buildings that needed urgent attention and construct new ones all together where necessary. With the help of the congregation of Holy Cross, and our provision, the Reverend Father Sipia Mubinaka CSC, in our meetings, who had lost my requests, and submitted them further for grant. We managed to face our compound, change the buildings from gray to colors closer to our Christian church. We built what a still residential house, renovated the hall and the guest house, built new showers, and last but not least, the Bishop Vincent Macaulay administration law, which has enabled us to have all parish offices in one room. Number seven, we celebrate Mindset Exchange Sundays. As the Bible rightly puts it in Hosea, the Lord Bishop, Hosea 4 6, that God's people perish because of lack of knowledge. A seminar was conducted in the whole parish as a way of enlightening, enlightening Christians on a number of things. The main focus was to help them understand that the parish is their responsibility and hence the need of owning it and sacrificing for it. Whereas this was only one phase, the Executive Council of the Lady and the Clergy endorsed more of such a seminars in our parish. The impact of the seminar was seen in the Christmas envelope, among others. The collection last Christmas moved from 40 to 50 million shillings to 80 million shillings <laughs> as a result of the seminar. Number eight, we celebrate accountability and budgeting. Responding to what had been identified as weaknesses 
and then we're in adequate knowledge and skills in financial management within our churches. This is the found in our strategic plan. We conducted the workshops in financial management and bookkeeping. Brother Julius in the CSC, who assists in financial matters, made sure that each church has a cash book. These cash books are easy detentions that we are uh, that we are financing later. For us to be exemplary as parish leaders, we have ensured that every month accountability copy showing all the income and expenditure be attached to every monthly sheet of program. Catechists and Christians in general are able to see how their money is came and how they have been put to use. We have also instilled in the church leaders the habit of making the budgets and submit them in time for the parish council to review, discuss and approve and later on forward to the office of the season treasury. But then we celebrate the monthly prayer power. This comes every first Saturday of the month. People from different parts of the park of our parish and beyond, and even those of different denominations, gather here and are able to listen to the word of God being preached to them. Prayers of inner healing and deliverance and finally mass as the climax of all those prayers and healing are conducted. People have testified being comforted through the preaching word of God, through the preached word of God, while others have received inner healing through forgiveness, physical healing and deliverance from evil in a, in a, a region that is dominated by other religions, especially the sect of the Isaka, the prayer power reveals to people that indeed Jesus is the answer to their different questions affecting their lives. Besides, they say the prayer power is in October, before we celebrate the parish day, which is St. Victor Day of Day, a week, a three day crusade, which leaves incredible changes in the lives of the people. Number 10, we celebrate our catechists. Can we start now? We want to celebrate these men and women in a very special way. Thank you for standing up and being seated. These honorable men and women, we are bishops, hold a very important position in the economy of salvation. I have often, often said to them that there is no parish without them. Yet, they are often not appreciated and sometimes mistreated. We have, as a way of boosting their morale, given them refresher courses, and we have determined to have all our catechists trained. We have brought people, we have brought people like Dr. Kazire, a catechist from Squala, to boost their interests of serving the kingdom of God. Again, Holy Cross Congregation has been very helpful here. As a way of improving the economic welfare, no minimum compared to what they do, we have done before. For those who live a bit far from their churches, we have been providing bicycles. We initiated a program of one piglet per catechist. Having served the catechist, we are about to embark on the assistant catechist. Three recently we had a meeting with all the chairpersons of the lazy from different churches to demand an increment in the incentives of the catechists. We asked them to submit to us what they decided to give their catechists, and if we are not satisfied, we will intervene. I'm glad to say that most of the churches have indeed expressed their willingness to 
cooperate in this matter. We have also opened an account of the Catholics in the self help group and managed reaching 5 million have been deposited. The best program that I have found amazing, dear Bishop, is the one that was initiated by the Catholics of Kikwela Kihada, aided by Mr. Emmanuel Kamara, please stand up, the chairperson of Kikwela Kihada, as of the late. Uh, Catechists of that center contribute to buy one another a motorcycle, and as we speak, they have already bought them and are embarking on buying land for one another. We are trying to encourage other church centers to do the same. At the end of the year, we gather with all catechists and their spouses to celebrate the end of the year and to offer a token of appreciation. This way, we recognize our catechists in front of their spouses that we appreciate their services. It is even sweeter when it coincides with the packet from Vatican. It is normally a great moment of interaction. On the 11, we celebrate the youth. With the help of the devil chaplain, right? Our Reverend Father Julius Mondelli CSC and the safety of the youth, the activities of the youth in the past have increased. So as to keep a closer relationship with the vulnerable group, especially in a wake of the social evils engineered by the so-called New World Order, an annual residential youth conference is held. It attracts about 500 youth, and we normally have facilitators from outside the parish. Our youth have prayer meetings at their different churches, and we also engage them in two music competition, Christmas carols, and they are among the three groups that animate prayer for our day. Whereas they have a good praise and worship team, there are a number of youth choirs in different churches. Recently, youth masses have been introduced in some parish level. Our youth participate very well in the activities initiated by the nurses. For instance, our youth are getting set for the forthcoming youth compete or for the forthcoming youth competition in soccer netball hosted by us, the Chelsea's branch. We want to celebrate families. There is no doubt that families are under attack and they wrestle with all sorts of evil from one level to another. Due to the law, the role the families play in the lives of each and every individual and of the church as the kingdom of God here on earth, therefore, our parish is resolved to empower karma and be willing to cooperate with the decision arrangements. We have an active family desk that offer advice and counseling. We are privileged to have an active team of Holy Cross Family Ministries. If you Holy Cross Family Ministries may stand up wherever you are. Holy Cross Family Ministries that offer all sorts of seminars and offer home and church visitation. Occasionally we have been having prayer related to healing of families. Lastly, but not least, we celebrate Holy Cross institutions. The parish is privileged to have the Holy Cross Grade 3 Health Center operated by both religious and ordinary lay people, but initiated by the Holy Cross Sisters. It is a worthwhile alternative to government's community health center. Similarly, there is a Boro, nursery, and the primary school. We have sent the representative Moro, if you may stand up. The health business we have already produced half. But um, this school is the best in the district, teaching many good things, including computers. They are little children, but very, very bright. 
if you want to do a full day, you would have taken you there and you would not regret the business. St. Joseph's here, senior secondary school, also founded and run by the Holocaust men who were serving in the parish here. That school has continued to talk to the individual districts. I'm glad to so I think they also said the representative. Are you stand up? Now the man behind the school is here, Brother Richard Quarters. I just happened to, to, to help him. But he stand up for founded the school. Three are still alive, one is in the Lord. Outline of parish projects. Whereas our main source of income continue to be contribution from the churches, the council of the late together with the clergy are in constant discussions on how to raise the level of income beyond the traditional or usual way. We have these as projects, and some of which bring in some sizable income that keep the parish running. Kaswa Forest Project. In one of the, it is in one of the farthest actually churches called Kaswa. The parish has a pine tree planted, pine uh, forest planted on 58 acres of land. This forest that was planted when Father Richard Potters was the parish priest is growing steadily. We have been taking care of it. In its vulnerable stage, we believe now it is outside any danger. Again, Mr. Kamara has been taking care of it. I took a small video as an example of what I'm talking about. We believe that in a period of two to three years, some things will be ready for harvest. We have a commercial building which is one of those sources of income, the parish. Once the government taxes are deducted, we normally get something to boost our income. We have tents and chairs. The parish owns them for our usage. Occasionally, we let people hire them for different functions, like weddings. It is due to high demands in this area. The recent meeting of the council of the late decreed that more attempts and chairs be purchased for income generating purposes. We have the social hall. <coughs> Ever since we renovated it, there have been high demand in renting it for different occasions, mainly political and social media. The national record to show that it has been contributing significantly to the income of the parish. <coughs> There are other projects in place whose income is not reflected in the parish books but will appear in the Chancellor's Church financial records. These include coffee plantation and tea plantation. It's not very far from here. Now that it is drizzling, I don't know how we will reach there. But we have also banana plantation. We have wasted much and sold much initially, but now the plantation is probably due to banana wood. We have planted more eucalyptus trees, especially in areas where we previously have harvested. We have few cows, but we now give us milk. And we have a good number of goats that have grown out of the leaves of the fish. The future plans, our plans are to accomplish all that we have laid down in the strategic plan. Since this plan is annually reviewed, we are open to the glory of the Holy Spirit where He wills and a new element of strategy that He brings on board. Responding to Bishop Robert Hewitt's call for increase in planting coffee, we intend to encourage churches in the size of the lands to venture into the field of money. We have a dream of developing a former residential house into a student guest house that will accommodate those who will have come to residential seminars and workshops. Looking at the beauty and vastness of the place, our compound is conducive to those wanting good trips 
Lord approach the Lord with self direct. In conclusion, the Lord Bishop Robert, thank you for making this unforgettable decision that your source parish to host such a wonderful delegation. Dear guests, we are very grateful for your visit. We also thank the provincial prayer for the city. We have to adjust a lot in several times. And just a lot of things to attend this function. The thanks to the Chancellor's Parish community for making this day a successful one. Before I sit, I will invite the Chairperson Council of the Lady to come on up so that on behalf of the parish, we present it to you. Meanwhile, I wish you a safe journey home when you return. God bless you. The family of the Christ, the